Hello everyone, in this very quick and simple tutorial I'm going to show you how you can deploy a simple uh, smart contract uh, on the Ethereum blockchain of course we're going to be using a testnet but the principles are the same using the Solidity uh, smart contract programming language now this will not require any understanding of programming I'll try and make this as simple as possible uh, we're going to be using the Remix uh, IDE now for those of you who are not uh, programmers an IDE stands for an integrated development environment it is basically a software or an application that uh, has everything you need in order to write uh, test and deploy code uh, I'm using a browser based uh, IDE uh, it's called Remix uh, you can find it at remix.ethereum.org now this is not what you would use if you were deploying a production ready software of course we will not be doing that today you can think of it more of as a sandbox or uh, a place where you can quickly test ideas or as a matter of fact uh, start learning how to code in solidity now what we're going to do is uh, click on uh, contracts and I want to create a new contract I can do this by uh, clicking on this icon here create a new file and I'm gonna call this test unique.sol uh, it needs to end with a dot sol because it, this is going to be a solidity uh, contract uh, the first thing you will have to do is specify a license uh, for this type of smart contract uh, this is a comment this means that it is not a part of the code that is executed uh, it is simply there to provide uh, information and the license I'm going to be specifying here this is how you specify a comment uh, is a MIT license which means that uh, anyone is free to use uh, to copy modify uh, publish or or sell uh, copies of this uh, software so this is free for anyone to use uh, the way I specify this SPD X license identifier and it is going to be an MIT license okay now I'm sure you can find information about this uh, online so I wouldn't spend too much time here okay you can see there are some pop-ups here um, those will be sorted out if we do a good job with the rest of the programming now this is the first line this will be your the first line of every smart contract you put together you the, the, the specifying a license the next extremely important thing you need to do and as you saw a warning uh, popped up popped up informing us that we must do this is specify the uh, solidity version that uh, we will be using now uh, as all software uh, different versions have different features uh, do different things and we need to specify the version of uh, solidity that we will be using and we also need to make sure that the compiler is compatible with this version but let's not worry about that now here is how you specify a version you start with pragma solidity and then you specify the version of the software in our case it will be uh, equal or higher to 0. Point 8.2 uh, and you end this as you end everything in solidity with uh, a semicolon here um, now how do we begin our contract very simply we write the word uh, contract and then we need to specify an a, a name uh, for our contract the name should of course be very descriptive it should describe what your contract uh, does um, if you're familiar with programming uh, contracts are essentially they're, they're very similar to class classes in object-oriented uh, programming languages uh, and as a class they can contain variables and other functions and our program our smart contract will contain um, uh, variables as well as functions so uh, in order to, to 
to begin writing your contract, you start with a command contract and then you, you, you put a name. The name should be descriptive, it should describe what your contract uh, is all about. In our case, we're simply testing things out. So I'm going to call this test and I'm going to start and close uh, curly brackets here. Now, what my contract is going to do is store a number and it is going to store my age and um, the I don't know why uh, this is for illustrative purposes, but I'm just going to store my age on chain. Now, the first thing I need to do here uh, is um, specify the variable. The, the main variable of my contract and the which is going to be my age as I said and I end this with a semicolon. Now I need to tell the contract what type of variable age is. Of course ages are numbers so it's going to be an integer. I want to save this as an integer and on top of that they are non-negative so I cannot be negative five years old. So I'm going to specify this as an u integer which means that it is a non-negative integer so this is the the um, the variable that my contract will contain and now we'll need to create a function uh, self-explanatory what a function does that will set that will allow me to set the age to store my age on chain and the way i create a function you guessed it right is by using the command function. Uh, I'm going to provide a name for my function which is going to be set age and then within a parenthesis I need to specify uh, the type of variable that I will provide. So my variable is x, this is how we denote variables, and it's going to be an integer again and a non-negative integer at that. Okay, So this is the name of the uh, function and the type of variable that it uh, receives and I open curly brackets um, uh, and specify that I'm going to set the variable age to x which where x is going to be my user input right oh uh, another th important thing that I forgot to add here is the term public so, and let me take a moment to discuss what that means. Variables in, in, in contracts can be, uh, for the most part, they can be either private or public. When a variable is set as private, this means that only functions within this contract can use it, can call it, right? So if this was private, uh, the only way that I could use it is with a different function that references the variable age. When it is public, on the other hand, it is stored publicly on the blockchain for everyone to, to access and verify and use. So anyone can call uh, this, this variable uh, a different function from a different smart contract and so on. So I'm, set, I'm setting this as, as public. Okay. So what I've done here is I've created a, a smart contract uh, that accepts age uh, as a variable with age being a non-negative integer. Now, I want this contract to have an additional functionality allowing me to read the age that I have submitted. And the way I do this is with a different function, which I will specify now, a function called get age. And what uh, get age will do it's going to be a public function, uh, it's going to be a view function and uh, returns and it will return a non-negative integer and what it will do, which is very simple, is return my age. And this is pretty much the smart contract. This is your first smart contract, it will accept a non-negative integer as uh, uh, and store it in the variable age and then we can call a different function of the contract and read uh, the age. Uh, what I'm going to do now is this is where this is where we uh, this is our file explorer this is where we uh, write our code I'm going to move on to the compiler. Uh, 
Now, what the compiler does is essentially, so this is human readable code. This is comprised of letters and numbers that uh, a human can understand. We need to translate this to machine readable code. So ones and zeros. So when we deploy a contract on, on the blockchain, we deploy it in ones and zeros. This is the job of the compiler. The compiler is a translator between letters and numbers that we understand and ones and zeros that the machine understands. So I'm, I'm compiling my contract now. I've made sure that uh, I'm compiling the correct contract here, test uh, unique.so. I've run the compiler and that is pretty much uh, uh, ready. The uh, compilation was uh, successful. And now let's move on to uh, and deploy this contract on chain. Now, uh, this is the deployment environment. By clicking on this drop down, you can uh, choose between different deployment environments. Um, what Remix does, which is very helpful, is allow you to deploy not only on uh, test networks but also on a local uh, javascript database uh, blockchain that runs on your browser now this is not of course uh, uh, an actual blockchain uh, but it is an easy way to see if what you're doing works and i'm gonna need some ether to deploy this contract i have various addresses uh, with loaded with a test ether and I'm going to click uh, deploy after I make sure that I'm deploying the correct contract. So I clicked on deploy here. As you can see, this has been deployed. If I scroll down, I'll notice this new thing here that didn't exist before, which is our smart contract, right? So, and it allows me, as I said, what to do, set age and get age. My age is 28. I'm going to set this like so. And then I can call the function get age and it spits out 28. So my smart contract word works exactly as uh, intended. If I change the age here, um, let's say I turn 30, set age, get age 30. And this is exactly how you can you know, store your age or any number um, on chain. This will be very similar. I mean, you can do cool things using this. You can, you can store, uh, I don't know, uh, marriage oaths if you uh, use uh, characters instead of numbers. You can store some important information that you want to preserve on chain because information stored there is going to be immutable. Now, this is not the most efficient way to do things. Um, we have come up with better solutions, but again, uh, it is, it is uh, a way. The last thing I want to mention is that in most cases, you're not going to be coding smart contracts for them from the bottom up. Uh, what you will actually be doing is using an application like Open Zeppelin and use uh, smart contracts or modify parts of smart contracts that have been uh, deployed and uh, battle tested and audited many times. Uh, here is an example of that. You can go under uh, so uh, Open Zeppelin. I'm at openzeppelin.com. Uh, I navigate to products, contracts library, and here you can see a uh, uh, collection, a selection of, of contracts. Uh, this creates an ERC20 token. If I click on uh, open in Remix, this opens up the IDE. This is the contract here. I can uh, compile it. This creates an ERC20 token called my token uh, with, uh, con with ticker MTK and I have not specified the supply here. Uh, if I deploy this uh, on chain after compiling this, you can see here that I have a token. I can approve addresses. I can transfer to and from. Uh, I can see the number of decimals, which by default is 18, I believe. Yes. And I can see the name of the token, which is my token, and the symbol of the token, which is MTK. So, uh, and of course, it has no supply. Uh, by all means, feel free to explore remix.ethereum.org as well as Open Zeppelin, and uh, good luck.